This week on ANN, Adventist Church Headquarters contributes to ongoing relief efforts in the Philippines. Church researchers discuss troubling trends in membership retention. And Adventist Church President Ted Wilson calls for greater involvement. These stories and more are coming up. This is ANN, a service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. Thanks so much for joining us this week. First in the news, top officials of the Adventist World Church this week pledged to send $250,000 U.S. dollars to the Philippines for humanitarian relief efforts. Super Typhoon Haiyan tore through the central Philippines last week, displacing an estimated 11 million people. The storm crippled communication and transportation in the region, thwarting relief efforts for days. Church officials said they'll leave the distribution of funds up to the discretion of the Adventist Church in the southern Asia-Pacific region. Meanwhile, the latest reports from Adventist humanitarians in the Philippines indicate that the situation remains dire. While food and medical aid is finally reaching typhoon survivors, millions of affected people are still in urgent need of food, water, and shelter, especially in remote areas. Entire communities continue to sort through the rubble of what was once their homes and churches. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency has distributed food packs and tarps for temporary shelter to affected families. Meanwhile, Adventist hospitals are serving as hubs for relief operations and medical assistance. Adventist researchers say they're troubled by the rate and reason members are leaving the church. The Adventist church has lost at least one in three members in the last 50 years. And in most cases, people are slipping out the back door, not because of doctrinal differences, but because of a lack of church support during difficult life experiences. Church leaders face this reality at the first global summit on membership nurture and retention at Adventist World Church headquarters this week. More than 100 attendees studied data on why members leave the church and how a focus on discipleship could increase retention. One attendee suggested that some evangelism funds could better be spent supporting the spiritual development of current membership. The summit also highlighted the ongoing need for membership audits. 30% of church clerks in one church region said they felt pressured to inflate baptismal numbers. Church leaders have fought for years to reverse this trend by calling for regular reviews of church membership records. The headquarters of the Adventist World Church opened its doors to the community last week for an outreach event promoting the biblical account of origins. A nightly audience of hundreds enjoyed a new version of the movie Creation, The Earth is a Witness set to live orchestral accompaniment. The film is a day-by-day -day account of the Creation Week illustrated with footage collected worldwide by Adventist filmmaker Henry Stober. A daytime program drew hundreds of school children to church headquarters for an interactive presentation by Guide Magazine Nature columnist Rich Aguilera. U.S. Senate Chaplain Barry Black, whose prayers have recently garnered widespread media attention, spoke to a packed auditorium Saturday night. He used his testimony to illustrate that the most compelling evidence of God's creative power is a transformed life. Adventist World Church President Ted Wilson called for greater involvement and unity among Adventists in a video released last week. He also updated viewers on the status of several church initiatives such as the Great Controversy Project. The project has seen church members distribute more than 140 million copies of Adventist Church co-founder Ellen White's book, The Great Controversy. Wilson also pointed out four areas that he said are cause for concern. A loss of Adventist identity among some members, growing secularism, disunity, and spiritual apathy. Wilson said his so-called State of the Church address was an opportunity to address challenges and prayerfully review the church's complete need of Christ. Coming up, we'll have a preview of next month's issue of Ministry Magazine.
As I was reading through the great hope, this phrase caught my attention. Men are not to be left in darkness concerning this important matter. The warning against this sin is to be given to the world before the visitation of God's judgments, that all may know why they are to be inflicted and have opportunity to escape them. And the reason why this phrase gives me hope is that even though in this world, which we have created and inherited and just lived in so much sin, that even at the end when God's mercy is short and he needs to finish this, to end this, that his mercy, in his mercy, he's going to provide us with warnings so that we that believe will escape them. And then we can inherit the heaven, eternity with him and live with him forever. Well, I think God did create rest, and rest it means a lot of different things to different people. And I think God embraces it all. I think I found, I discovered Sabbath again in college. We really worked hard all week long and frequently into the night. And I couldn't wait till the sun went down Friday night because I knew without any guilt whatsoever that I was free to rest. One thing that really overwhelms me is the fact that, you know, I don't have a job. How am I going to provide for my family? During that time, I recall trusting God to direct my path in this. Prayer is the exercise of faith, and by it daily, God bestows privileges upon us. Death is the only inescapable, unavoidable, sure thing. We are sentenced to die the day we're born. Death is a debt we all must pay. Some people are so afraid to die that they never begin to live. Every man must do two things alone. He must do his own believing and his own dying. Death is not a period, but a comma in the story of life. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Welcome back. The December issue of Ministry Magazine highlights efforts to share the Adventist message of hope worldwide. Willie Hux has a preview. Jesus called a small band of followers to continue his work of going into all the world and making disciples of all nations. When we look at the book of Acts, we see his church expand from Jerusalem to lands far beyond Judea and Samaria. Paul, the greatest evangelist of the first century, traveled tirelessly to establish new churches in several countries. 2,000 years later, we see that Christianity exists in almost every region of the world, positively impacting those who come into contact with its powerful message of a risen Savior. Seventh-day Adventism in particular also has extended its influence from a small group of believers who formed the church 150 years ago to a worldwide movement that currently numbers in the millions. And this growth rapidly increases as a result of those who lovingly share the gospel found in the Word of God. In the lead article of the December issue of Ministry, Peter Rowenfelt 
an experienced evangelist, tells the story of how he and other pastors in Papua New Guinea devised a plan to reach the residents of Port Moresby. They touched the lives of many who lived in squatter settlements, attended universities, and who otherwise simply lived their lives in regular fashion. At the end of four years, 14 new churches were established. Rowenfeld advocates that planting churches is indispensable to fulfilling Christ's great commission. In another article, Milak Alamayehu asserts that this process of sharing God's saving love should not be solely relegated to pastors or renowned evangelists. Church plants should produce additional growth in the same way that the vine of John 15 produces fruit. In other words, the church members also have a role to play in completing God's work on earth. In concert with our vision to produce an international journal for pastors, we have assembled a truly international body of writers who contributed to this issue. As always, we pray that you will be edified, informed, and enriched as you read. The Adventist Church's Risk Management Organization works to make sure that Adventist volunteers stay safe and productive during mission trips. This week, John Thomas and Tim Northrup walk us through the logistics of short-term and long-term mission service. Hello, my name is John Thomas. I am the director of the Adventist Volunteer Service Program. The mission of the General Conference Adventist Volunteer Center is to assist the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the proclamation of the gospel to all peoples through the ministry of Adventist volunteers, matching talents, gifts, resources, and professional expertise with defined needs. Volunteering isn't for everyone. The Volunteer Center has developed qualification guidelines that will help determine if the volunteering experience is right for you. We have also prepared a step-by-step -step process to help you prepare to travel abroad. This includes information about obtaining visas, financial planning, and more. There are many types of volunteer opportunities, but they can be broken down into two basic categories, the long and the short term. We have worked with Adventist Risk Management to provide insurance options for both of these. Hi, my name is Tim Northrup. At Adventist Risk Management, our ministry is to protect your ministry. This is why we have prepared several insurance programs to cover volunteers traveling abroad. Travel can be an exciting adventure, but it is also important to have the right travel insurance if things go wrong. Short-term travel accident insurance is vitally important and can be accessed anywhere to help make your travel safe, convenient, and rewarding. The short-term travel insurance program we provide is available to volunteers, employees, retirees, individuals, or groups on business or sponsored approved travel of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Church's international short-term travel insurance includes the following trip cancellation interruption, medical protection, accident medical expense, sickness medical expense, emergency medical evacuation, repatriation of remains, accidental death and dismemberment, personal effects baggage, and travel assistance. We have also made some insurance solutions available to volunteers who are engaged in the long-term travel programs. The accident and sickness insurance coverage is available for individuals who have been authorized by the official institutions of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This coverage includes medical expense, emergency medical evacuation, repatriation, and accidental death and dismemberment. Having a productive volunteer experience depends so much on effective planning. Remember to coordinate with your organization for proper approval and with the Adventist Volunteer Service Office so that we can help make your volunteer experience a success. Thank you for being an Adventist volunteer. Burgeoning church growth in Nigeria is creating a need for better organization and ministry support. Erika Puni has more. Church growth is a good thing. It means that many are joining God's church in response to the gospel. But with church growth comes the need for organizational adjustment. This is what is currently happening in the Adventist church in Nigeria. Plans are already underway for this region to divide into two organizational units because of the size and membership of the church in this part of the country that warrants better ministry support and efficient field response. 
The Stewardship Ministries Department at the World Headquarters of the Church in Maryland in the United States of America joined Dr. Ben Sean, Vice President of the World Adventist Church, along with local leaders to assist in this reorganization and to provide the necessary stewardship training for such expansion and further enrichment of leaders in their ministry to their congregations, including the newcomers and the youth. Over 1,100 registered delegates attended the Stewardship Congress in Oweri, Nigeria from March 20 to 23, 2013, organized by the Regional Office of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Nigeria. While many of the attendees were church employees, representing administrators, pastors and heads of church institutions, most were local leaders of local congregations. Dr. James Bandu, Stewardship Director for the Seventh-day Adventist Church in West Africa, whose offices are in Abidjan, Ivory Coast, and oversee this region, commented after the Congress that the church in Nigeria will never be the same again. With a heart for God and an eye on the future, this region is going to experience phenomenal growth as a result of this training event. Still ahead, update your ministry with email marketing service providers. But next, keep up with your favorite Hope Channel show in between broadcasts. The book The Great Controversy for me is the most powerful book that Ellen White wrote. This is the book that can touch lives and hearts. The Great Controversy project is the great opportunity that our church has to do something big for God in this time when the people is looking the catastrophes and the problems we will present our message of hope. All around the world, Seventh-day Adventists are reading a chapter of the Bible per day. We call it Revived by His Word. With the new free iPhone and iPad apps, you can join in and read the daily chapter on your device. Highlight verses and share them with your friends via email and Twitter. And follow the daily feeds. And you can do this in English, Spanish, or Portuguese. Get your free Revived by His Word app now. I pray for my mom, dad, and my sister, and if anyone in my family is sick, I pray for them. I pray for that everybody gets to go to heaven. My family members that are sick and poor, I think that's all. Please pray at 7 in the morning and at 7 in the evening, 7 days a week. My daughter was sick, and she had to go to the hospital. And I was still working outside of the home. So my job, they didn't trust me. They felt that I wanted to stay home so bad with my kids that I would, I would lie or I would, you know, cheat their time in order to be home with my children. And when people don't trust you like that at a job, that just makes you feel like, why should I even be here? So again, I prayed and I asked God to just please help me out of this situation. Please, I know you know the answer. I don't know what else I could do. There is a garden in every childhood 
an enchanted place where colors are brighter, the air softer, and the morning more fragrant than ever. Of all life seasons, childhood is the most beautiful. Children are the living messages we send to a time we will not see. Blessed indeed is the man who hears many gentle voices call him father. A child can ask a thousand questions that the wisest man cannot answer. When I approach a child, I have two thoughts, affection for what he is today and respect for what he can become. There are no seven wonders of the world in the eyes of a child. There are seven million. Children are one third of our population and all of our future. He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Welcome back. The Adventist Church's official television network is offering free online resources to supplement popular shows like Cross Connection. Carmen McMurdy reports in this month's update from Hope Channel. What's your favorite show on Hope Channel? Is it Cross Connection, Go Healthy for Good, Let's Pray, or something else? Well, whatever it is, I'm sure you have often wished you had something extra from the program that you could use later. Hope Channel now has resources that you can download and use any way you want whether in your personal Bible study, in your church, or just to share with a friend. These downloads will help you strengthen your faith, health, relationships, and community, and they are absolutely free. Just go to hopetv.org slash ministry dash downloads for a variety of free resources, short videos to play at church, health segments to use in doctor's waiting areas, notes and outlines for your Bible study groups, and new recipes to try. New material will be added frequently, so visit the site often. That address again is hopetv.org slash ministry dash downloads. For Hope Channel, I'm Carmen McMurdy. The email marketing service provider MailChimp makes it easy to design, send, and share email newsletters. John Beckett explains on this week's Tech Corner. Email newsletters are a cheap and easy way to share what's happening in your organization or ministry. They're also a great way to remind people to visit your website or come to your events. Often, email newsletters start as a periodic email that gets sent to a group of people. What most newsletter authors don't realize, though, is the benefit of taking the next step and moving to a mailing list management system. In many cases, it doesn't cost anything and can help you be more effective at sending out your newsletters. The biggest reason to use a mailing list management system is that it takes care of the day-to-day -day drudgery of adding and removing people from your list. For instance, maybe somebody received a forwarded copy of the newsletter and wants to subscribe. They just fill out a form on a website and are instantly added to the list. Removal is just as easy. They just fill out the web form to remove themselves. My favorite mailing list management tool is MailChimp. It works really well and for smaller lists it's free. Many small ministry lists would easily fall into this free category. To get started, sign up for a free account at MailChimp.com. Once you have the account, create a new list and build the sign-up form. You can then email out a sign-up link or post it on your website. Use the MailChimp site to instantly email to your list or to schedule future emails. You can also set it up to automatically post on Facebook or Twitter. To learn more, go to MailChimp.com. Adventist World Church President Ted Wilson is inviting viewers to accept God's many gifts. This week's gift is God's love. God is love. It's the simplest and yet the most profound summation of who God is. Love led God to create the heavens and the earth. Love moved Him to create people and to send Jesus to die for sinners. 
which includes each one of us. Love caused God to gift us with His Word so that we would become better acquainted with Him and have a light to shine on the pathway of life. And it is His transforming love in our hearts that moves us to show love to others, even to our enemies. God's love is what will bring Jesus back for His own. Accept God's gift of love today and allow His love to live in your heart as you share His gracious gifts with others. Now let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week a former prisoner of war becomes an Adventist pastor and lifelong administrator. Welcome to This Week in Seventh-day Adventist History. On November 17 in 1844, George A. Irwin, later the sixth General Conference President, was born. Irwin served in the Union Army in the American Civil War and was born again as a Christian while in a Confederate prisoner of war camp in 1864, but not until 20 years later was he converted to Seventh-day Adventism. But shortly thereafter he became a pastor, then four years later president of the Ohio Conference, and then in 1897, just 12 years after he was converted, he was elected president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, an office he filled until 1901. He subsequently served as president of the Australasian Union Conference, of the North American Division, of the Pacific Union Conference, and of the College of Medical Evangelists, now Loma Linda University. On Irwin's birthday, 107 years after his birth, on November 17, 1951, the first Adventist church was organized on the tiny island country of St. Helena, which lies in the South Atlantic Ocean, 1,200 miles or 2,000 kilometers west of the African coast. The church then had 17 members. Today, it has 110. On November 23, 1969, the new government of Libya, the so-called Revolutionary Command Council, led by Muammar Gaddafi, who had overthrown the Libyan monarchy, nationalized Benghazi Adventist Hospital and ordered all the Adventist missionaries there to leave the country. This effectively ended Adventist presence in Libya for more than 40 years. That was This Week in Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the meantime, however, you can find us on Facebook. You can connect with other Adventists worldwide and find links to more stories, photos, and videos. Just visit Facebook slash Adventist News. Our good news for this week comes from the New Testament book of 2 Corinthians. The passage says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's our program from this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Till next time, God bless. Take care. <laughs>